Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire, and yes, I have a new intro here. I hope you like it. Anyways, today is about creating magic iris cards. Lawn Fawn recently came out with a brilliant die set for making these magical type of cards. And I wanted to show you how they work. There's a little tab, and when you pull it, you can see how it opens up to reveal something inside. I actually have three versions for you today showing you how you can stretch these products to make many different types of cards. Now I know I usually try to focus only on interactive cards that you can do without any specialty dies, but sometimes a die set comes along that I think is so brilliant that it's worth sharing, and that's the case with today. I'm really impressed how Kelly and the folks at Lawn Fawn engineered this. It's really uh, quite simple to pull together in such a unique uh, interactive card design. So even if you aren't interested in interactive dies, I do have other tips that I'll be sharing along the way. Okay, so here is the new Lawn Fawn Magic Iris die set. It comes with all the pieces you see here, and it allows you to make one of these Magic Iris cards. The first die in the set is the ring die, and this one cuts the rings you need to assemble your Magic Iris, but it also cuts a decorative circle that you can put inside or use for something else. Next up is what we call the sausage die. It looks like a sausage there. It does have a little X on one part of it, and that is so you know where to put the glue, which you'll see in a moment, but I really like how well designed this is. Up top, we have what I call the wonky die, which is just what we use to help assemble everything. And to turn our magic iris, there are two dies. We have the tab die here on the bottom, and then the decorative piece, so the person knows how to turn it. And then finally, we have the connector die. This cuts the connector pieces that allow us to assemble the magic iris. And by the way, I'm sorry for the giant band-aid on my finger. I actually cut the tip of my finger with scissors when crafting, so I'm waiting for it to heal. Okay, in addition to the magic iris die set, there are a couple add-on die sets available. This one is the scallop add-on. It allows you to create a scallop top on your magic iris. It also comes with a different tab option, decorative tab die there, and a different die for the center, a diff different decorative piece. There is another add-on available. This one allows you to kind of hide the mechanisms of the magic iris, and I will be using this one on my second card. So I'm gonna be showing you all the different pieces in action today. And my third card actually shows, shows you how to make a large magic iris card that's five by seven. Okay, so first I think it's best to go through an assembly of the magic iris. I'm gonna do this slow so you can follow along. The first step is to create three die cuts using the ring die. I'll set two of these aside for later, and on one of these, I'm going to cut it with the wonky die. Remember this wonky looking die? This one, you just line up right in the center. And once I have it lined up, I'll put some temporary tape on there to hold it in place and run it through my die cut machine. You can see how the center of the die cut lines up with the center of the die very easily. After we run it through our die cut machine, we have what looks like a life preserver here. It has three slots and three guidelines cut into it, which will help us later on. Next, we need three sausage die cuts. We're going to put these sausages into our life preserver die cut. I do find it helpful to have a few pieces of purple tape available or any kind of low tack tape. So I have three tiny pieces here. We're going to take one of the sausage die cuts and hook the tip of it into one of the slots. So see how I hook it in and I push it right up to the outside edge of the slot. And then I turn it and line up the curves of the sausage with the curves of the life preserver. I know this is crazy wording, but I feel like it helps to explain it. Then I put a little piece of purple tape near that X, but not covering it up. I'll do that again. Slide the next sausage into the slot right up against the edge. Then I'll swing it over till the curves line up. Put another little piece of tape near the X but not over it. And then finally we'll do the last die cut. You could skip the purple tape here but I really find that it helps keeping everything lined up and just makes it easier. Okay, so now we have this funny piece. You'll see little tabs hanging out the outside edge. That's okay. We'll take care of those later. Next, I'm going to take mini glue dots and put one mini glue dot on each of the little X's that are cut into these die cuts. 
So you could use any other uh, strong adhesive that is tiny, but I find these mini glue dots are the perfect size and you just put them on top of each of the X's. And there's a close up to show that. Okay, now I'm going to take one of the other rings that we die cut earlier and line it up and press it down onto those glue dots. Don't worry about the tape that you have there. We'll take that off later on. Okay, so now we have our ma magic iris starting to form. For the next step, I'll flip our ring over. And remember how the wonky die created these little guide marks on our ring? I'm going to draw pencil lines coming out from the center of those guide marks to the outside of our ring. You don't actually have to draw these pencil marks. I just wanted to do so to make it easier to see in the video. So now I'm taking some strong double-sided tape from Lawn Fawn, and I'm putting that over our pencil lines, basically from the center of the guidelines to the outside of the ring. I then will remove my release paper, and you'll be able to see the pencil marks there. This is the back of the mechanism, so you won't see it later on. But I just wanted to show you that the adhesive goes right in those three spots. Now we'll take our connector pieces, and I die cut three of those. And I'm going to line those up over our adhesive so that the tip of the connector piece is between those guidelines and right up against the inside edge of our ring. These will hang off the edge, that's okay, but just make sure that the inside curve of the connector piece lines up with the inside of the ring. And again, the tip goes right into those guidelines. So now the hardest parts are over and we're in the home stretch. We're going to flip this over and you have what looks like a Y shape. You can see how there's the two that stick out the top and then one kind of towards your body. Doesn't matter which one. I just like to position it like that. I will then take one of my tab die cuts and I'll put adhesive towards the curved end. So I'm going to put uh, two pieces of strong double-sided tape on there. You could use liquid adhesive if you want. Remove the release paper, and now we're going to position this tab on our top ring so that the inside curve matches the inside curve of the ring. I'm going to position it down here by this bottom one. It doesn't matter which one, just have one that you pick, and I'm going to position it right up against it. So I'm going to put that right on the inside curve, and notice how the connector piece sticking out on the back and the tab kind of form a little upside down V down there. See how they're close together? You just want that close together, but not overlapping. The tab is only glued to that top ring. It looks complicated, but it's really easy to figure out. Okay, now we can assemble. So now I put some adhesive onto the little connectors that are sticking out, the little legs. Then we take our third ring and just lay it on top. I'm not using any glue here. I'm just laying this third ring down on top of our mechanism. I will then wrap the connector pieces up around this top piece. When you do this, you just wanna kinda of do it loosely. Don't make it too tight. You just fold it over gently and then press it down, making sure that all of your rings are lined up. See how I'm not pulling that connector over? I'm just folding it over gently. When you do this, the curve on the end of your connector will be just outside that stitch line. See how it doesn't come all the way to the center of the ring? That's okay. If it looks like this, you're doing good. Now we can test out our magic iris, but we first need to remove that temporary tape that I had in there just to help hold things together and lined up. Once I have that removed, we can hold this in our hand and move that tab on the side and you'll see the magic iris working. It does work better when you have it glued down to something, but you can test it at this point if you want to. Now we can add our magic iris to our card. I'll flip it over and fold over the tips of these die cuts here that are sticking out. You don't need to glue them, just fold them over nicely, that way they won't show on the outside of our iris. Next, I'll take some strong adhesive, I like to use double-sided tape, and only put it on these connector pieces. Don't put it anywhere else, just those connector pieces and then add that onto your card wherever you want. Now when you add this onto your card, I do think it's best to have your magic iris in the closed position because we wanna make sure that it'll fit in the envelope. So you can see my adhesive on the connectors only. I'm going to close up my iris and then line it up on the front of my card. You want to make sure the tab is kind of up towards the top corner and not hanging off the card because you want it to fit in your envelope okay. 
So now when you pull this tab, it opens up to reveal whatever you want inside. You could glue a circle die cut in there, do stamping, whatever you want. The final touch is the little decorative die cut for the tab. And you glue that on there so the recipient knows how to turn it and open up the interactive feature. To give this a clean look, you can add a circle die cut to the center. I put adhesive on the back, drop it in the opening, and then run my craft pick around on the inside to make sure that it's underneath all the mechanisms inside of the ring. You can then see how you can have that different color on the inside. You can also cover up your connector pieces on the top by die cutting another ring and adding that in place. This is where the other add-ons come into play and I'll show you that on my next few cards. So now that we've gone over the basic uh, assembly of a Magic Iris card, let's step it up and add some more things to it and see all the different ways you can use it. Now for this one, I wanted to go for a different look and I combined some stamps and dies that I had together for a scallop magic iris. Off screen, I went ahead and created the note card and background. This is a five and a quarter inch square white card. And I used the Simon Says Stamp UR stamp to stamp on Lawn Fawn Guava cardstock with Lawn Fawn Guava ink. So I wanted a subtle tone on tone background. For the sentiment that's inside of our magic iris, I use two stamp sets. The first is the Lawn Fawn Swan stamp set. This is a new one. These images would be great with the magic iris. But from this, I just use the word beautiful. I like the look of that and it's the perfect size. I also use the Lawn Fawn Dandy Day stamp set. This is adorable and also great for the magic iris. I took the sentiment that says, I think you're dandy and I I cut off the words, I think, and dandy. So I just have the your sentiment. That way I can stamp your ahead of the word beautiful and I have my own sentiment that I created. Now off screen, I also created a magic iris mechanism out of white cardstock. All the pieces are white. And I made it just like I showed you the exact same way. I now am holding this at the center of our card and I'm tracing the inside so I know where to put my sentiment. I'm using my Misty stamping tool just to make sure I stamp it correctly. I'm lining up the word beautiful and the word your right in front of it. I will use my anti-static powder tool, stamp with Versamark ink, and then add white embossing powder. After I heat set it, I can go ahead and erase that pencil line. And this will be the sentiment that's inside of our magic iris. Now it's time to add our iris to the front of the card. So on the back, I'm putting strong double-sided tape on the connector pieces only and folding those tabs in, not gluing them down, just folding them in. I'll remove the release paper and then I can line up the magic iris around our stamp sentiment right under the front of the card. Don't worry, we'll decorate the front of the magic iris later on. So once I have that lined up, I'll just test it out and you can see how easily it opens and closes. Now I'm using the scallop add-on die that I showed you earlier. I die cut that from white cardstock. And now onto that, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Blooming Circle die. I thought it'd be fun to add these little flower die cuts to the scallop circle. And this will go on the front of our magic iris. I also die cut a magic iris ring from white cardstock. And I'm covering the top with adhesive. There are many ways you could do this, but this is what made sense to me at the time and I'll place our scallop die cut on top. Now all of those openings have ex adhesive exposed. So I'm going to inlay different colors of cardstock. I just die cut the blooming circle die from different colors of scrap cardstock. And then I'm popping all the pieces in. I really like to do die cut inlay like this. It feels like I'm assembling a puzzle. So once I have it filled in with color, on the back I'm putting adhesive. And then I'll lay this on top of our magic iris ring that's on the card. So this gives it a decorative look. For a little bit of sparkle, I use my Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen to add some shimmer to some of the flowers in our background. And on some of our flowers, I added Lucy's Cards Lemon Jewels so that I'd have a little bit of dimension and shine. So here is the completed card. I put it in a five and a half inch square envelope. And when you pull the tab, you can see the sentiment that's revealed inside. Notice I didn't put the decorative arrow tab die cut 
onto the tab on my card. The reason I didn't add it is because I'm sending this to Kelly and I know she knows how the magic iris works, but if I were sending this to someone else, I definitely would use the little arrow die cut tab, which I'll do on the other cards. So there's my first example of using the magic iris card with dies and also the scallop add-on. Okay, my next example shows how to create a little bit of a scene using the other add-on for the magic iris. This time I have lots of die cutting and a little bit of stamping too. From the main die, I will die cut three times, twice from Hero Art's sand cardstock, and from that I'll form the sand of our scene, and then once from Hero Art's Arctic cardstock, which will be the background of our card. So now the two sand pieces, I'm using the Lawn Fawn stitched wavy border dies to create two layers of sand for the bottom of my card. So I'll just line this up along the bottom, and then tape it in place and run it through my die cut machine. And I'll do the same on the other. The reason I'm doing this is now the pieces have that nice decorative edge that lines up with the background. You could definitely hand cut these pieces, cut your own wave, totally up to you. I also use this other wave border die to cut from some pool card stock that will be the ocean in the background. I'm basically just gluing them together, allowing a little bit of each to peek through. Now we have our Arctic background. This is gonna be our sky. On the bottom edge, I'm putting double-sided tape. You could glue this down flat if you wanted to. You can decorate the front however you want. Now I'll line up the sand with the bottom of our card and then trim off the extra of our blue wave. And there we have our sand and our ocean. I wanted my magic iris window to look like a sunshine. I'm using the Hero Arts 12 point star infinity die set and I die cut this from some light yellow uh, cardstock that I had a scrap of. Towards the center, I'm using a blending brush to apply Hero Arts Butter Bar ink, just to make the center a little bit darker and have a little variation of color. I then will line up our sun with the window on our add-on die. This way, I will have the center cut out to be perfectly lined up with our magic iris that we'll put behind our main scene die cut. So now I have our little sunshine and I'm going to glue this on to our scene. Now I probably should have glued this down first before the water in the sand, but it was an afterthought. So I ended up gluing it on here and then I had to trim away those rays on the bottom and tuck them behind the ocean. But that's okay, I wanted to get it just right. Next time I would put the sun down first. Now it's time to assemble our magic iris and I thought I would go through it again, this time at regular speed to show you that it really comes together quite quickly. I first die cut my little life preserver from one of the rings and now I'm sliding in each of the sausage pieces. I do find using that little bit of purple tape near the X is helpful in keeping those lined up. It'll help to make your magic iris work even better in the end. Be sure that the tape that you use is low tack, like a painter's tape or a washi tape or purple tape like this. You can even remove some of the stick first by pressing it against your skin. We just need a light tack. Now I'm adding the mini glue dots to each of the X's that are cut into those die cuts. Now we'll take one more ring and add that on top. Now we can flip this over and add our connector pieces. This time, I'm not going to draw the pencil lines first. I'm just going to show you that it's easy to do without. You just put a piece of tape going from the inside guidelines to the outside edge of the ring. You could use tape runner here if you wanted to also. I just find double-sided tape is easier in this case. Now I'm putting our connector pieces down, making sure it's right into those guidelines and up against the inside edge of our ring. I decided to create a white tab this time, so I'll put adhesive on the back of our tab, and then I'm going to glue it to the front of our magic iris, making sure that the edge of the tab is close to one of those connector pieces that's sticking out. Also, you want to make sure that the inside edge of your tab lines up with the inside of the ring. We're in the home stretch here. We need to next put some adhesive onto the little connector pieces sticking out and then take another ring and lay that on top without any adhesive, it just lays right on there. While holding the ring in position, I will gently fold over the connector pieces. You don't wanna do this too tight, just gently fold it over, and that will allow your magic iris to work magically. 
After removing the tape, you can just test it out and make sure it's working nicely. Now we need to add our decorative tab piece for this add-on. It's this wonky looking one that you see here. You're going to glue it onto your tab, and then you're going to use your scissors to cut off whatever is sticking out. Now this looks weird, but I promise it'll be good in the card on the end. I also used that decorative tab to die cut from some darker blue cardstock and glued the arrow in just to give it a nice finished look. Now we can put our magic iris behind our scene. I'm putting adhesive all along the top of the magic iris. And I'm going to line it up behind our scene. Make sure your iris is closed. You're going to line up the hole and the tab with that little tab slot on the front of the card. So you can see how I'm lining up the hole in the middle and the tabs. Once we have that pressed in place, we can go ahead and fold our little tabs over on the back. Don't glue those, just fold them over. And then I'll put strong tape onto the connector pieces. I also have a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I will put some double-sided tape around our mechanism. Make sure you don't put any double-sided tape close to the mechanism or in the way of our tab. Just around the outside edges is good. I can remove the release paper from the connector pieces and add this on to the front of our note card. And check it out, there's our little sunshine that opens up nicely. Now I have a yellow circle that I'm going to pop in the inside. It's probably best to glue this down first, but what I do is I pop it in place and then I just run my craft pick in there to make sure it's behind all of the pieces in there so that the magic iris will open and close nicely. Now I used the Lawn Fawn Smooth Sailing stamp set, which was one of my favorites from last year. And I stamped the smaller sailboat on white cardstock with black ink and I colored it in with Copic markers. You could color it however you want. I then cut it out with my scissors, but you could use the coordinating die. And I'm gluing that right down onto that yellow circle inside of my iris. I thought it would be fun if the sunshine showed up when you open up the magic iris window. I also used the Lawn Fawn hammock and tree die set to create two palm trees that I'm gluing to the scene. And I kind of like to have them hang over the iris window just to make it all connected. I stamped a sentiment on the sand piece on the bottom of the card, and now I'm using my shimmer pen to add some shimmer to the rays of our sunshine. So here's the finished card. You can see the little scene that we have when the card is closed, and then when you pull the tab, you see our little boat inside the window, and it looks like it's kind of floating there in front of the sun. So that's another way to use the magic iris to create a scene using that add-on die. My last example for today shows how to use the magic iris on a bigger card. So this card is close to five by seven. I like you making a bigger card with the magic iris because you can create a bigger scene around it. But I have a trick I need to show you to make the tab long enough. For this card, I'm using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Balloon Frame Dies, which is on the left. That smaller balloon frame will work perfect with our magic iris. I wanted some more balloons to decorate the card, so I'm using the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitched Balloon Die Set. So I'll be using the, the two smaller balloons in this set, but you could use any circle dies and create your own balloons if you want. I'll also be using images and sentiments from the Lawn Fawn Really High Five stamp set. I like that you can use these images to do high five, jumping on a trampoline, or hanging from balloons like I'm doing today. I'll start by creating my background, and this piece is four and a half by six and a half. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil. This is a cool new stencil. It has grid lines to help you make sure it's straight. And then there's cloud edges on each side. I'm using a blending brush and some Altenew Sea Breeze ink, and I'm pulling ink from the stencil onto the cardstock to create these highlights in the cloud shape. Remember, you could use all four sides of the cloud stencil and flip it over for four more looks. Now off screen, I did create a magic iris using Lawn Fawn Guava cardstock, just like I showed you earlier. The tab piece is white. However, for this card, since it's bigger, I need to make that tab longer so it can go behind that big background that we just created. So I die cut another tab and I'm going to glue it on top of this one to just extend it. So I'm just basically making the tab longer. 
Now I ended up making it longer again later on, but this gave me a good start. I just wanted to show you that you can always change up this tab for however you want to make your card. So now you can see the little tab sticking out is longer and it still works perfectly. We need to next create the window on the front of our background to line up with the iris. So I want my iris to be right about here on the front of the card. So I'm taking the center of it and I'm using that to trace with a pencil. I didn't want to take the time to find the perfect size circle die to cut this. So I just traced it and I'm cutting it with scissors. It's okay that it's jagged because it will be hidden and this doesn't take long. So I'm cutting just outside of that pencil line. Now we have a window that'll line up nicely with our iris behind it. And then remember we have that balloon die cut frame that we can put on the front to cover it up. So it all comes together nicely. So I'm just going to tape that balloon frame over our opening. And then I die cut some other balloons using the other balloon die set and some scrap cardstock. So I'm just putting these down with a tape runner. I will go back and put some strong adhesive behind it later. I want to make sure those stay put, but I wanted to be able to move them around for now. I also stamped, colored, and die cut some of the little critters from that really high five stamp set. I'm going to position these under the balloons so that I can create a string to connect them. Before I finish the front of the scene, I wanted to make sure the iris was going to work. I'm putting adhesive all over the top of my iris and I'm going to glue it behind that opening. I'll put it in the closed position first so I know that the tab is up towards the top right corner. And when I glued this down, I tested it and check it out, my tab isn't long enough in the bottom position. So I need to make that tab longer again. Remember I used tape runner so I'm able to take that carefully off the back and change our tab. Now I'm going to die cut another white tab and glue that on top too. So I have three tabs sticking off, off here, but it allows me to make a bigger note card. I like to change things up like this to get more uses from the dies I have. So here I'm just testing it out to see if it's gonna work and check it out. The tab is long enough now, yay. So I have these three tabs sticking off. I want that to be really uh, strong and sturdy since it sticks out so far. So I have another tab die cut that I'm gluing on the back to kind of sandwich those all together. This needs to be strong because it's sticking out and it's long and it needs to be easy to turn without folding when the recipient uses it. So I've got those all layered together. There are other ways you could have made that tab longer, but this is what made sense to me at the time. Just showing you the process that I go through. Now that I know the iris is gonna work okay, I can finish off the front of my card. I'm using a black pen to draw strings to connect the balloons to the hands of our critters. I also decided to stamp a little sentiment on the bottom right corner from that same really high five stamp set. Now we can glue our background down onto a note card. I'm putting double-sided tape around the mechanism. Notice it's only on the outside edges and we're not putting anything too close to the mechanism and nothing in the way of the tab. Make sure that tab can move back and forth freely. I will also put strong double-sided tape onto the connector pieces on our iris mechanism. I then can add this onto a note card that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So just a little bit smaller than five by seven. I wanted the tab to hang off. In the center, I added a die cut circle where I white heat embossed happy birthday, and I'll put that right into the window. If it's easier for you, you could do that before adding the background, it's up to you. Next, I added just a little black arrow die cut to my tab so the recipient knows how to use it. I also added some iridescent gemstones to the background, and there we have a fun birthday card, and this one's actually going to go to Lila for her birthday. So it is a little bit smaller than five by seven, so it'll fit into a five by seven envelope perfectly. So there you have it, three fun ways to use the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris die set. I just thought it was a brilliant and unique die set and I wanted to share that with you. If you are interested in the supplies, they're linked below in my YouTube description. In the middle here, I have a couple other interactive card videos you might like. If you wanna hit subscribe, you can do so on the top left. Thanks for visiting. Oh, and go to my blog because I'll be giving away a magic iris die set to a lucky winner. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon and have a great day.